Good afternoon from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. This is Tanya Ahrens coming to you from Brisbane, Australia, Southern Hemisphere, planet Earth. In the eternal flow of the space-time continuum, it is 12.22pm Brisbane time. I just had a funny flashback, well not a funny, not funny haha, but as in funny weird, about my, my, my night on Friday night, which I made a previous video about how that ended rather um, painfully and triggeringly with me um, escorting a young woman to the police station to report her torture, so not pleasant. But it was a very spiritually innovated night and I had been dealing with a supernatural scale anxiety all day on Friday, which I go into more detail about that in my previous video. And uh, But I just realised um, I left out some important, uh, important details. As you all know, the Tanya, that is me, has been uh, healing herself from decades of um, intrafamilial abuse, but also uh, relationship abuses. And I have, in a rather naive Pollyanna fashion, but a human, humanistic fashion, been manifesting and craving and praying for and hoping for and dancing towards the preeminent void of existence <laughs> um, hoping for a um, life partner to enter into my life and be a loving caring respectful honoring partner and I've been wanting that for decades I've, I've lived alone for 28 years and um, I've needed to to keep myself safe quite frankly and the few romantic liaisons I had um, over the course of the 28 years I mean the only serious semi-serious relationship was from 2005 to 2010 with a man who was just so completely defunct and um, you know, really parasitical vermin in many ways. Um, <clears throat> so it was probably fortunate that I didn't marry him. Um, so, anywho, what happened on Friday night was when I dance, when I dance, um, I dance usually if I'm physically well enough and strong enough for three to four hours used to be four to five hours only a few short years ago but my health has spiraled under in recent years um, probably from the Covidian cult stressors and you know my lungs are my lungs are, are and have always been precarious so um I'm building up stamina after my last serious illness last June. I'm build it wasn't COVID, still haven't had COVID. Isn't that ironic? The woman with the worst lungs and <laughs> who suffers obstructive sleep apnea and who has chronic bronchitis and who has industrial lung damage from cutting and, and cutting up PowerShell last um previous year um, has managed and and is unvaxxed by choice and by sheer determination um, has managed to not catch COVID and uh, so it makes me wonder really how much of this COVID was a beaten up bloody hoax because it was all around me at one stage and I did think okay sooner or later it's going to happen I'll have my turn and I'm quite sure that I will eventually have my turn because you know that's the nature of viruses they 
come and go like the plague. Um, but anyhow, uh, so spiritually speaking, it was intense on Friday and I was on very high alert uh, spiritually. I was expecting some kind of mischief or trouble or some kind of attack um, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a psychic or a physical attack. Um, I was hoping that it would be especially not physical attacks because I'm not well and I don't heal so easily now. It takes me a while to recover. Anyway, it ended up with being no nothing of the sort and I was merely a bystander and um, went to assist this young woman. But it, it hit me this, just now, I was sitting here, and uh, I, I, I met a man who was, well, as soon as I, I saw him watching me from, from the distance, you know, several seats away from me, he was obviously sussing me out. But I, th I think he was sussing everyone out because it, it turned out that he's a, a Afghanist, from Afghanistan and... Uh, therefore potentially a trauma survivor and most trauma survivors are very cautious about how they um, meet people. They usually stand back and watch and observe and see people's modus operandi before they launch themselves at people, usually. Depends on the personality. I myself tend to be a bit impulsive when I meet people. I, I still have this programming that I, I like to think most people are by by nature good and very quickly I find out usually very early in the piece that that is not always so. Little Charlie's come to join us. Anyway this Af Afghani man who had been watching me for several hours eventually came to dance with me and the, f the first thing I said to him when he came up close and I sort of saw his features more, you know, more distinctly, I turned my head and I said, oh, you're from Afghanistan. And his eyes went very wide and he was quite freaked out actually. And he said, yes, how did you know that? And I just stroked the side of his cheek very gently and I said, oh, your beautiful face. And... I, honestly, I don't know what comes over with me. Sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I had had a few, I wasn't drunk. I don't let, allow myself to get drunk when I'm out dancing because it's it's very dangerous and vulnerable to lose control when you're surrounded with a, a room full of dangerous strangers, including the women. But um, I, uh, men and women, but especially the men, um, and I'm very well protected in that um, in that venue because I've been going there for 12 years. They know me well. They know my facial features. They know when I'm about to lose my cool. And um, I'm, I am conscious and aware that, that there is a level of protection, but it cannot always be guaranteed. And, uh, and, and I'm also conscious of that, that I have to manage my own trauma issues and my own dance but anyway look I had a lovely time I did have a lovely time it only went weird at the at the end when I was waiting outside um, to have something to eat and have a bit of a rest before I jumped in the car and drove home so um Afghani man Afghani man got freaked out that I psychically intuited that he's from Afghanistan but it wasn't just psychism I can tell by the the way people hold themselves usually usually I can tell by the mannerisms um, usually not always where they come from and um, he just he just reminded me of someone that came from either Afghanistan or you know, Pakistan or that region. Anyway, he ran away from me for a little while because he was 
he was confronted by the fact that I had intuited his background. And I get it, it would be a bit weird. I mean, I even think it was weird that I did that. And, um, but he was intrigued. So he came back and danced with me again. He put his hands out. Um, he stood in front of me with his back to me, put his hands out. And I, when I put my hands into his hands, he wrapped my arms around him in an embrace. But I did not press my body up close to him. Like I, I let, let him have my arms around him, but I kept that distance because I don't trust strange men. So it was playful, but I was still maintaining my guardedness. And honestly, I don't even know how it came up, how I said it. Um, I can't remember how the conversation happened. He didn't speak much in the beginning. Cause he'd sort of he'd wander away and then he'd come back and he'd wander around and came out. It's happened about three or four times. So I think he was a bit intrigued. But he was also dancing around other women. So he was clearly hoping to hook up for the night, as men do. Um anyway he um <clears throat> Oh yes, I remember how it happened. So the song, um, the song by Madison Avenue came on. Who the hell are you to treat me like that? I don't care where you're going, where you've been or where you're at. Blah, 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 blah. And I winced, and he saw my face wince. I mean, it's a nice song and I like it, but it forever reminds me of my dead ex-lover, David Davidson, who was a complete monster. Fire upon you for eternity, you bloodless, evil fucking cur. But anyway, I know, I know, I'm supposed to forgive and that will free me and that will allow new love, blah, blah, blah. But I've done that scene. I've d I did the forgiveness with him over the course of the 16 years until he died and it didn't work for me. I ended up attracting more arseholes and more arseholes and they were getting by, in turn, by turns even more dangerous. So I've returned to the pagan way of, of not forgiving one's enemies and cutting their throat, figuratively speaking, not literally, for eternity. Because the only way to stop a vampire, a psychic vampire, is to just, well, put a stake in their chest and leave them dead, soul dead for eternity, right? Well, that's the theory anyway. And it's not up to me, it's up to the Holy One and all manifestations to heal that and deal with that. And from time to time, that spirit, that entity, that demon spawn does still make his presence known in my home, which he's not actually allowed access into my home, but he does send me messages from time to time, which I find a little bit concerning because he should have a long time moved on and evolved in the spirit world by now he's been dead since june 2006 uh, may 2016 he died i didn't find out by his haunting for four nights until june early june 2016 so i think she just did a poo on me yes she did you're the bloodless cur of the birdie num num variety Shitting on your mother every chance you get. I do love you though. You are a lovely bloodless cur, shitty poo bum. <coughs> so anyway, so here I get to the point of my video. So Afghani guy, I didn't get his name, he didn't ask my name. Um, when I winced at, the, at the, the refrains of that song starting up, and he said, oh, why, why are you not like, the, you know, like this song? And so I looked at him and I smiled and I said, oh, I said, it is a song that I actually like very much. He said, oh, he said, your face doesn't say that. And I said, no, I said, no, I said, because I said, it reminds me of an ex-lover I had. I said, a long, long time ago, and I just frowned because I, 
I wasn't going to go into detail with this strange man. And anyway, he looked at me very passionately and very passionately, which tells me he has a level of interest in me that is not necessarily for my highest good or wants to have <clears throat> relations with me that may or may not be for his or my highest good and I'm not going there, guy friends. Sorry! Um, <laughs> I have to laugh. I do have to laugh. He very passionately and flamboyantly waving his arms around, very Middle Eastern style, you know, said, uh, you have to let go of the axe. And I just looked at him and I smiled very serenely. I said, oh yes, oh yes. I said, don't worry. I said, I have let go of the X. He said, oh, but the song, the song still upsets you. He said, you must let go, you must let go. Um, words to that effect. Anyway, I looked at him and very fiercely in my Bodicea manner said, oh, I have let go. I said, I do not hold on to dead men. And he looked at me like in shock. <laughs> and you know what? It's true, the dead can't hurt you anymore. They can haunt you and they can bang on your door and run up your front steps and they can demand forgiveness via mediums who turned out to be a neo-Nazi. So that was weird. That was very fucking weird and confronting. He can jump into people and try and get my attention. He can do all sorts of demonic things. But he will never have me again. Never. It took a long time for that love to finally die. And I did suffer immensely. And the dead can dance on their small corners of hell. And he's up there with the other vermin, my mother and my father and the pedophile stepfather and godfather. They're in their little small corner of hell. And all they can do is use living entities to jump in and confront me from time to time. And I just tell them, I do not consort with the dead. I might communicate with the dead from time to time, but the dead will never control me again, ever. Not like they tried to do in lifetime, in my lifetime. So I got to thinking, the way I said it was blood coldly, blood curdling, chilling. I do not consort with the dead. With uh, how, how do I actually put it? I do not consort with dead men. Anyway, this Afghani guy, he, his eyes just flared up like this. Because, you know, people from Afghanistan, by and large, are Muslim, and they understand about the jinn. The, I call them the jinn, but... That's my New Zealand accent, right? My my cleaning lady says it's Jean. Anyway, that's all right. Jin, Jean, Genie. In Hebrew, we call them Dubukim. I'm not quite sure they're exactly the same thing. I think Jin spirits are connected to the land. The ancient light, ancient spirits that are land land gods of the desert um, and Dibukim are the souls of the dead who either have a contract with a living person or possess a living person take over their body and use them like meat golems and literally are a form of possession so they're, they're similar but not quite the same. But I believe that the gene, the gin, the genie are very capable of doing the same thing. Um, using physical vessels for their own um, 
aggrandizement or malevolent deeds according to the situation I suppose. I don't think necessarily all jinn are evil um, just like all people are not necessarily evil um, but that's me liking to th liking to think of of positive outcomes and sweetness and goodness and love and light at times. I can be a bit childlike in that respect, which is funny given my life experiences. I do know better. I do know better than to subscribe to the love and light modality because I have survived some of the worst darkness inflicted on human beings. So there is that. But anyway, Afghani guy looks at me when I said I do not consort with dead men in his eye. <laughs> I think he realised, I think he realised he was dealing with someone that knows, that knows about the spirit world, that knows about the occult world, that has lived it, lived through it, and reached a certain degree of, um, well, triumph over adversity. And Friday the 11th of, the 11th of um, February, I think, was it Friday, was it the 11th or the 10th? Anyway, it was an intensely spiritually innovated day and night. And it went on from the moment I woke up in the morning at 8.30 that morning to the moment I went to bed, which was about 4 or 5 in the morning of the following day. So, Afghani man. Hmm interesting was jealous of the merest thought that I might have had a great love in my life that was still haunting me and you know that level of jealousy and um, competition is what I had to deal with with the last love interest who's also called David Dave he was so spiteful and envious of my dancing joyously in the pubs and clubs and venues of Brisbane City and the Valley. And it's kind of nuts because he met me at the Elephant Hotel in the Valley the first time. So he knew when he met me that I liked to go dancing and enjoy my nightlife. And... Um, but anyway, that love affair did not come to full-blown fruition because he played too many cruel games and I was aware and awake to it, even though in the first few years of that romance I was still under the effects of very heavy psychiatric medications, which I weaned off. Ironically, at the same time, I finally took the last psychiatric medication um, it was in early June 2016 when the dead ex-lover decided to haunt me at my front door. So the timing was very synchronistic and a bit frightening. I thought I was having some psychotic break because I'd weaned off the meds. You're supposed to wean off them over the course of two to three months. And I had been so determined to get my body free of constant poisons that I weaned off them in the course of a month. So <clears throat> I, I thought when this um, haunting happened that, and for the first three nights I didn't know who that entity was, I actually thought I was having some kind of breakdown, except I'd look at the dog and the dog would be staring at the door in shock and horror too. So, judging by the, my dog's reaction, I knew I wasn't psychotic. Because um, you can't make a dog psychotic. You drive him a bit mad, I suppose, but you can't. Psychosis, to my knowledge, is not contagious. 
certainly wouldn't affect a dog so anyway but i just wanted to make this video and and record that the, that this afghani man passionately and great um enthusiasm and, and valiance you have to let go of the x <laughs> And he's right, of course. I did let go. I let go many, many, many times. And they keep trying to attach, like, um, creepy Cthulhu um, infestations, grabbing at my energy, grabbing my attention, right? Like the one that I still love and have not completely let go of who presses my buttons on the internet because he's a stalker and a twat. Yes, I know you watch my videos, Dave. <laughs> maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Maybe I'm just paranoid. But you're not really paranoid if you see the same patterns arising cyclically every few months. Um, and my, my psychiatrist knows I'm not paranoid too because he's been observing that same pattern. So, no, I'm not paranoid and I'm not imagining things. And true love. Who is true love for, Charlie? Charlie, who's true love for? Is true love for the birds? True love's for the birdies. So my spirit messenger came in the form of a man from Afghanistan. And I told him, also, I said, I have had many difficult relationships with Middle Eastern men. And I pointed and nodded to Seagal, only because she happens to also be Israeli. And I said, and Israeli men. And so Afghani guy freaks out, what's wrong with Middle Eastern men? And I said, Middle Eastern men and I do not mix and that is a tragedy since I'm Jewish and wanted a Jewish husband or partner <laughs> and I had to leave my own Jewish community because I had three separate Jewish men try to kill me so there is that so obviously my destiny my my neshama uh, will not allow me to consort or have relationships with Middle Eastern men because it's just too bloody dangerous and life-threatening so there is that but then you know I thought perhaps I might meet someone from Viking ancestry and I did meet a few a few Viking people. My, my ex-boyfriend Courtney was part Norwegian. Uh, was he Norwegian or Danish background? Anyway, he was part Viking, but he was also life-threatening and dangerous. And he wasn't even man enough to do it himself. He had to inculcate his friends to do that. And I can't respect a coward. I can't respect a coward or a bully, you know. Threatening to um, smash my face with his brass knuckle duster to the to the point that his mother hid it. That was insane. But that's what happens when you have a relationship with drug funk to grokking, gronking, bottom dwelling, low class idiots. You know. But that's all right. He was good to me for five years. He kept my little car going and he had his purposes. And um, I don't believe in transactional relationships. I believe in true love. So I was very well aware that that relationship was one based on really just using and abusing. He fixed my car and he had lots of regular sex and a woman who was, you know loyal to him. I even supported him when he had a um, an accident and actually had a plate in his 
uh, smashed his head and had to put a plate in his skull. And thinking about it, that's when he started getting more threatening and escalating and violent. So, you know, <laughs> probably sustained some form of brain damage. Or it probably just brought out his more innate assholery as things sometimes do. Anyway, I let go of him a long time ago and I certainly don't miss him. Or his foul, gronking, neo-Nazi, stupid friends. And um, my Jewish lovers, who I had high hopes of, were just as dangerous and toxic. So now we have sweet little Bodicea with her sweet little birdie sitting under the tree laughing about who the spirits might send me next because I'm still waiting for the one a man who's worthy of me who's decent and human and kind and respectful and certainly not a using parasitical um, verminous, treacherous, backstabbing, filthy monstrosities like the last, uh, the last four or five partners I had. Uh, Dave Charles, Courtney Evans, uh, my ex-husband Michael Ahrens, who ironically I still keep his surname in honour of his father who paid off my house and was a decent man and loved me and was only really in my life for the last six weeks of his life because he died of bowel cancer. So... But yes, the grandfather to my children was one of the few decent men I, I ever met in my life. So I bear his name. I don't bear my ex-husband's name. He's not worthy. He's not honouring. Certainly not worthy of any honour. He's a disgrace is what he is. So my new Afghani romantic paramour wanted wants me to let go let it go let it go like frozen and there are some things that it's very foolish to let go of because it will haunt you for the rest of your life and sometimes for eternity so we will drive a stake into that one that meat golem figuratively not literally you understand although if the times get any more crazy and more dangerous you might just have to drive some stakes into some meat golems literally it's a bit frightening i'm thinking about that young maori woman and uh i hope she's okay and i guess I won't know, will I? I will never know how that ended up. But I hope she's okay, and I hope she has a good life now, and I hope she gets her freedom. And uh, I know she has the strength and the mana to um, survive quite well on her own. And she was very pretty and still young enough that after she heals from this horror, that she might eventually find a good, kind, loving man to um, live with in a harmonious, joyful existence. Just like my little dream of having that too, which is getting more ridiculous by the day given that I'm old now and I don't think I have much time left on earth anyway. But then how many times have I said that? <laughs> a million over the years. So, my daughter invited me, she messaged me earlier to go up to Mayala, um, which is a beautiful forest on Mount Glorious. 
but it's very very hot and I'm not supposed to drive my car for far distances because I need I need $440 to fix the front gate uh, brakes and I don't have the money so I'm worried about that so I thought no I won't go I'm not going to do um, I'm not going to take risks with the car um, because if the brakes fail that could be a terrible accident so um, I'm missing out on a lovely afternoon stroll through the forest which is deeply healing and spiritual for for me and my daughter and my friend Jared if he goes so anyway um, but I'm sitting under my trees and thinking about life and taking enjoyment where I can so God bless God's bless uh, blessings from sacred space here and have a wonderful day people